Hey folks, it's Van Jungbeck for you and today it's Proper Chords to Joseph Joseph, one of the important songs of the style of Gypsy Jazz and when I say proper chords I mean the idiomatic chord voicings that you need to play this song and this style actually the right way. So let me say first that I released a new bundle on my PayUp channel so if you have problems to follow in these bundles there are all the chords just like in diagrams I have two hop solo choruses of lead guitar tapped out written out with notes and all demonstration videos that you need just check out the description box and you will find everything and before I start I will play a chorus to show or maybe two and then we talk about the details and the chords so usually Joseph Joseph's played pretty fast and it starts with an intro that goes like this one two three <laughs> Joseph Joseph and um, there is a variation also concerning the chorus that the French guys do a lot I will talk about it now while I'm doing the demonstration so the first song to start uh, the first chord to start with is a minor 6 and this a minor 6 chord is pretty common also in other kinds of music it starts with the middle finger on the a fifth fret on the E string we got the index on the fourth fret of the D string this is F sharp and Ring and Pinky are playing 5th fret on G and B string. You can vary that by placing the ring finger on all three upper strings. It's the same chord, the quality doesn't change. Actually there's a couple of, you know, grace notes that you can put into this chord, for example, for an ending. This would be, this would be the Pinky in the 7th fret, making it A minor 6-9. The other voicing that I use a lot for this first chord, which is the tonic chord, is this one. It is actually a simple voicing and I have my middle finger in the 7th fret and the ring finger too on the A and D string. The index is playing the C, which is the 3rd, 5th fret on the G string and the pinky is playing the net little 6, 7th fret on the B string. This is actually a short form of a way more complex chord that's really hard to get. And this is this one. So you play all six strings and you play the root with your thumb while the middle finger is playing two notes at the same time, which is E and A, seventh fret. Again, the index is covering the third and the fifth fret on the G string, while the ring finger now is covering two strings and this is F sharp and B and the B string and the E string. This chord sounds very powerful, especially because it's got the power chord in the bass. So the difference can be heard, I try, I try to make it clear. So this is without the thumb and the high E string. And this is with these two notes. So you got this woomy, buzzing sound that's typical for the style. Actually, some other ideas for the A minor 6 chord is using the very simple Freddie Green voicing. Therefore, I'm just playing like three strings, just the E string, the D string and the G string. This chord is just awesome and it's one of the most important Gypsy Jazz chords because it can be a minor 6 chord. But if we say, okay, A isn't the root, A isn't the fifth, then exactly the same voicing is a D dominant 7 chord with A in the bass. And it can also be F half diminished with A in the bass. 
So this chord can also be A diminished. This is awesome. It gives us the opportunity to move it around and have different functions by playing the same chord over and over again. And this is exactly the voicing that we, the, we would play to create some walking bass kind of ideas. You can instead of playing a static chord all the time even move it around. Let's give it a try. Instead of playing the six bars of A minor that are obligated, we could just move it around. And then we end up on E, which is crazy, all with this chord. The second chord would be E7. Also notice that this chord form is very typical for traditional European music. A lot of musette waltzes share the same form. Usually in gypsy jazz these are played in the key of E minor so that you don't recognize it in first place. But it's exactly the same chords. Joseph Joseph then also has Montagne Saint Genevieve which is Django's waltz. Or for example Bistro Fada by the famous Stefan Vrembel. It is also the same chords than Indifférence. Uh, at least in part A. So we now move to the fifth degree to the dominant chord. For E7 I like to play a standard E7 chord which looks like the C campfire chord moved up to the seventh fret just with E, G sharp, D and E or I like to play a little more bossy voicing which is this one. It covers the lower four strings and with the middle finger I play two, str two strings at once. E and A. Then the index is playing G sharp and the ring is playing D 7th fret on the G string. You could do it with four fingers of course as well. The reason I do it with one finger is that I also like to cover the upper three strings all with my ring finger. The thing about that is doing so amplifies a, a kind of wrong note in the let's say diatonic world of Joseph Joseph because the E dominant 7 9 chord includes an F sharp which wouldn't be your first choice but anyway you do it a lot in gypsy jazz I think this is because players do not learn it with books they don't learn it in a theory way and so this chord actually the chords are played that short that it's important to play the right chord but little options like the 9 here are pretty okay and also the 9 appears in the half tone whole tone scale which is also used a lot in gypsy jazz. When I play any kind of these E dominant 7 chords I do the same thing that I did with A. I move them around chromatically to build some tension in my rhythm playing. Check this out. to do that and you can do it too. Just move it around like one fret below and one fret above. So before we move to part B of course we go back to the tonic to A minor 6 and have one last bar of E dominant 7. Let me say one thing if you have two problems to follow the form please download the Django fake book. I also put the link into the description. It's for free and all the songs that played in our style appear there and most of them with the right chords. It's a good navigator through the world of Gypsy Jazz. <clears throat> Part B starts with the same chord with A minor 6 and you can also play one of those voicings that I showed you before. So let's say we have four bars of A minor 6. Before we move to the fourth degree to the subtonic chord we have two bars where we play A dominant 7 which is kind of a secondary dominant chord leading to the D minor chord. I like to play the following voicings. This is the normal A7 jazz chord with A, A string muted, G, 5th fret, 6th fret C sharp and E. Gypsy players would usually play this with the thumb at the bass and also keep the option open to play the 5th with the pinky which is a typical Nushi Rosenberg chord. It sounds very buzzy and woomy with the advantage compared to the bar chord that you leave out the nasty sounding 
root up on the E string. So this chord sounds like this. Compared to the sound without the fifth, almost the same. And the same, of course, than this. What I also like to do is I like to play Freddie Green voicing from time to time, which is just covering the lower four strings with A, A string muted, G, and C sharp. And from there I move to a substitution which is C sharp dim. C sharp dim is an important sound in the world of A dominant 7. And you can move this one around in minor thirds. I give you some examples of that. Let's say we're in part B and I play these kind of chords. Ah, oh, sorry, <laughs> that was a major chord. Here we go. You see, I moved from A dominant 7 to the C sharp dim, and I can do this with the thumb. I can use the Freddie Green chord. I can use the Nushi Rosenberg chord. And then we move to the fourth degree with this D minor 6. And you have the D minor 6 with the D on the A string, fifth fret. The natural B, the 6, the natural 6, the B, is on the fourth fret on the G string. And the third, the F, is on the sixth fret on the B string. And we have two bars of this one. I also like to play them up here in fret 10, the same way that I played A minor 6. The reason why I even prefer this is because I can use the Freddie Green voicings and the voicings we learned before to move there in this way. So I did A dominant 7, E7 with B in the bass, moving that chromatically to F7 with C in the bass, and then choosing A with C sharp in the bass. Power chord on the D string, and middle finger is playing C sharp. You can also do that with ring uh, index and pinky, and putting the ring finger in the bass, ending up on D minor 6. When walking back, I also like to use some Freddie Green voicings. And this is D minor 6, C6 with C, A string muted, A, 7th fret on the D string, and E, E dominant 7, and back to A. While the final progression would be 6th degree and 5th degree, both as dominant chords, F7-9 and E7-9, and A. And the last dominant chord, E dominant 7, if we start again. So that's it. One thing that I was talking about is the difference what the French guys are doing. Of the four bars of D minor in part B, they play the last two bars D minor as a B flat major chord, which sounds pretty good. It's a B flat major six chord. I will do this. I will start with part B. Check this out. So instead of this B major 6 voicing that I just played, which is the standard regular jazz voicing with B flat, G, D and F, you can also play the gypsy jazz voicing, which looks exactly like the A minor 6 chord, the nasty one, but it's in the 6th fret. And of course the index is moving up a half note, one fret, to make it a major chord. 
If this is too hard, again, you can play the middle four strings. That's it. When this song comes to an end, usually, there's a couple of options. Usually, we do like three rounds, which means like last A and we're on F7. So usually a stop on F, a stop on E. For the rhythm guitar player, that means he's doing the stops, nothing, and A, because the lick in between is usually played by the lead guitarist. Also, what people are doing is they go from which is the same chord that we had in the intro, and this is an A minor 6 chord. Up in the 10th fret with C, 10th fret on the D string, F sharp, A, and E. It's the same chord that we had in the intro. Approaching the E, releasing to the A, and then playing the chord. And it starts. This was proper chords to Joseph Joseph. Make sure to get the bundle to get all the details, also to get some nice solo transcription of my solo playing. And um, click the subscribe button. There's tons of material, videos, stuff like that. If you maybe have the question, who is this guy? I'm Sven Jungbeck. I play in the Joshua Stefan Trio, Gypsy Jazz, worldwide with one of the leading bands as a rhythm guitar player. And also have my own trio with Freddie Gebhardt, where I'm the lead guitarist together with Freddie. And we also tour Europe and the States. So check out my releases on my webpage. All links you know in the description. It's worth giving it a look. There's tons of stuff for you. It was a pleasure for me. Hope to see you again. This was Sven Jungbeck. Bye.